Hello and welcome to another short series of films about radio and this time in particular the phenomenon that was pirate radio. Many radio hams when talking about pirates are talking about illegal ham radio operators which of course are pirates but I'm not interested in them or will pay them any time here. I am just interested in the underground world of pirate radio. Radio that was broadcast on or near to existing commercial and corporate radio stations and was in all senses sticking two fingers at them in many ways. Now I'm not going to go into history of pirate radio stations like Radio Caroline and others because it has been very well documented. I want to do a few things in this first episode and they are to show how many licensed radio hams gathered an interest in the subject and how that evolved through the making of and testing of transmitters to the completion of radio shows and finally all these years later to test if one of the very much homebrew transmitters that was made back then still works after almost 30 years sat in a box. A little bit about how this started. At the age of 16 I started work in my town as an electronics repair technician at a local lighting company. It was a fun start to work and was a job that combined my love of electronics with the daily grind, making it less of a grind. I used to use test rigs to test the lighting equipment and when the test rigs stopped working we had to call the service tech guys from downstairs to come up and fix the kit. One guy who came up regularly who seemed to be able to diagnose and fix the stuff super quickly was a guy called Arthur. Think Doc from Back to the Future and you wouldn't be far off. He was a slightly eccentric but highly intelligent electronics engineer, maybe seven years older than me at the time. After a few chats we quickly found we had a common ground in electronics and guns of all things. Back in the good old days here in the UK we could legally own pistols and other firearms and Arthur had many of them. Sometimes he would surprise me at work and knowing what a gun nut I was he would just tap me on the shoulder and I would look down and there was a large cloth bag on my desk. Grinning I would sit there at work and carefully slide out a 44 Magnum handgun. With no bullets of course. But can you just imagine that? Just the mention of the word gun in the workplace these days would get you locked up. I went on a few shooting trips down to Bisley Rifle Range here in the UK where we would literally walk in with a carrier bag full of bullets we got from home and blast away. It was during this period on the way to the shooting range I started to listen to stories of how shows were being recorded and radio range tests and that after a bit of an inquiry I found out that two of the three people I went on these trips with who were also ham radio operators were also pirate radio DJs along with their friends and family members. I sat in on a few recordings which I have to say were very professional. One of the group had literally a studio with mixers and mics all set up in his spare room at his mum's place. A 90 minute show was recorded which was one cassette long and sometimes longer if they were feeling brave. After a few visits I was invited to go to site to see it all set up. The show as mentioned was pre-recorded on tape and high level locations were selected on a rotational basis around the town to transmit from. In this case the gear was thrown in an old army kit bag. This included two times 12 volt lead acid batteries lashed together, the home built transmitter and reversing tape player. The antenna was a very basic affair and consisted of two welding rods soldered to copper circuit board which was cable tied to a piece of wood to form a very basic dipole. One of the more sporty of the group would then climb a tree with the antenna in hand whilst one of the other members would set up the audio gear and transmit it below. In the early days I found this quite fascinating. I wasn't a radio ham at the time but knew it wasn't legal. But that just made it more fun to me. It wasn't legal but I loved the sticking two fingers up at the establishment, especially the BBC attitude that it represented at the time. Before the main power amp could be switched on, they would test the audio by switching on a radio receiver nearby and adjust the transmitted audio level as required. Then, with a flip of a switch, the main power amp would be switched on and it was live. Properly live. I had no idea about radio or the mechanics of it, so imagine my face when one of the group pulled out a three foot fluorescent tube from one of the bags and waved it at me like a lightsaber. What's that for? I asked. Testing the power, came back the reply. Oh, I said. 
The tube was quickly passed to the man up in the tree. I was expecting cables and things to be plugged in, but the guy just simply held the tube in his hand as he waved it within six inches of the antenna. The tube lit up. I simply couldn't believe what I was seeing. Did I miss a physics lesson? Talk about how to get a kid interested in radio. Back to Arthur. He was also part of the group and would attend, but was less interested in the radio DJ side of things and was more interested in the making of the transmitters. He was very skilled and had grown up in North London in the 60s as a kid surrounded by hams and had picked up all the skills required to make ham radio transmitters. It wasn't exactly a big step to move this on to making pirate radio transmitters. Let's now go over to me in the studio and look at the radio. Right, this is the unit. It's been sat away for a very long time. Actually heavier than I remember it actually. Uh, a couple of fairly sturdy die cast boxes bolted together. Simple volume on off control on the front and a nice affirmative click toggle switch there. A couple of LEDs, that's the power uh, section and this is the pre-amplifier section. It's very very windy outside at the minute, you'll have to excuse the noise. Blowing a gale here in the UK at the moment. Uh, just binding posts for 12 volt on the back of it there and an SO259 socket built into the back of the case. Uh, like I say, the vintage, this is probably 1988, 89, as late as 90 maybe for this. I can't quite remember, it's a very, very long time ago. Um, this has seen a second life. It, it was sold to somebody and I, I, I gained it back for repair. So it has had done some work. This is the um, the section inside. This is the the um, <clears throat> the front end of the radio, if you like, for the power amplifier stage. The audio section is is basically set up here in this first stage, and pass through to the first section, the RF. This is based on a, um, uh, a frequency multiplier circuit, um, which you can go and look up, rather than me badly explain, where each stage is multiplied over. Uh, again to the next stage and to the next stage and then the power is increased gradually now this um, improves the stability of the system as opposed to just making an outright oscillator at your set frequency it's a much more um, stable and robust way of, of circuit design um, this is a, a design uh, a, a circuit you don't see used very often now outside of ham radio circles some people still do make circuits like this it's a very fast and efficient way of building circuits Let's look at the power amp. The power amp side, um, very, very basic again, uh, features um, a TRW2N6081, although it originally featured a Motorola version of that transistor. It was actually blown up by the original, and one of the guys that was it was sold to. Um, <clears throat> I think he, he put the uh, power, reversed the power to it, which we've since corrected by putting in the diode and that fuse you see sort of uh, soldered in place there. Um, but this was the, 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 the power amplifier stage. On a good day, uh, with a little over 12 volts, you could get about 12 to 15 watts out of this, a little bit of gain out of the antenna, and it would see you definitely a good 20 to 25 miles on a, on a, on a clear night. The guy, that um, Dave, that bought this uh, and used it, um, he would report the, them sort of ranges to me. So it was, um, I, uh, as you'll hear in the, the next video, I never... Uh, actually use these transmitters but um, I did pass a few on uh, via Arthur for, for other people and I did also repair a few as you can see here where the uh, the, the lid <laughs> took the brunt of the uh, of the transistor blowing um, so uh, but it, I mean lovely that these units have survived and none of the capacitors seem to have leaked or caused any issues so we'll give it a thorough testing anyway and uh, and see if it still does the business all these uh, years later i'm hoping that it does although it's never going to be used as far as i'm concerned again but um very interesting now for testing purposes we're hooking it up to a current limiting power supply here because i just don't know what this thing is going to do and i want to try and limit the current in case there's any issues and uh, I don't want to see any smoke come out of this whole thing. It's more of a sentimental value for me th than anything because it, of, of the story of how it was actually manufactured, which if you hang on to watch the next video, you'll hear a little bit about that. And uh, it was a kind of magical, magical time. And it's what really kindled my interest in radio. It really, really fired me up and got me interested. 
um, even though I didn't actually use it as a transmitter just making it was just so much fun or being involved in making making it really did open my eyes up so we've got the scanner and we're going to set the scanner on the output frequency of this unit which is 105.3 FM and uh, let's have a little listen what we're looking for is a nice clean signal with nothing on it when we turn this on this is the front end so we've got the volume for the input signal and our audio input and this is the front end so this will be about a watt of power nothing more than that okay aha that's a good sign we have a red light and we have a nice wide signal there nice and clean as well no noise look look at that volume fully up on the scanner and that's not been switched on for well certainly over 20 years that's not bad going, is it? Let's um, let's see if we will get a conventional radio and just uh, have a listen into that, and then we'll put some audio through it. All right, we've still got a nice solid signal there. Um, the hum you can hear in the background is is the transformer in this old current limiting supply. Okay, right, we've got um, some of Andy Kirby's music for copyright reasons queued up on here. Um, I'm going to give it a try, um, see what it sounds like, see if it comes out. Let's try. Well, I think that was a success. We'll um, take this head torch off. We'll try that on um, on a normal radio, a conventional radio, one that would have been used back in the day. Um, just see if that's coming through all right. And then we'll pop it on the dummy load and check, see if we can get the power stage to work. That could be interesting. Right, we can find it there. We've got the green light tuned down. Nice empty signal. Yep. There it is. Absolutely crystal. No humming or buzzing or anything. And we're running it off of a DC supply there. So that's pretty good. Right, let's uh, get Andy playing. Just wake the phone up and try it. It's coming out the uh, scanner first. Let's turn it off. There we go. volume. That's the tone and that's the volume. And then five point three. Right, if you've lasted this long, I really appreciate you hanging on. Um, you're going to have to hang on a little longer to the next episode to see if this radio still knocks out the full uh, power that it did back in the day, though, um, because I need a dummy load. I need uh, a dummy load to plug in to actually test the radio. So um, that's not going to happen until tomorrow. So if, um, if you want to join me, it's not going to be weeks. Don't worry, guys. I'm hopefully going to get the video up uh, within the next few days. And um, there's a bit of a follow on video on how this radio came to be. Um, so if, if you want to tune in for that, I'd really appreciate it. So if you have been, thank you ever so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Let's try and get me over 3000 subs before the next video goes up. It will make the day and a half I spent putting this together worthwhile. Okay, so thanks again for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.